This week on Makeup and Murder Monday, we are debunking a popular myth about Halloween candy. Today, we are going to discuss a very interesting um, urban legend that has gone around for decades about Halloween candy. Has your kid's Halloween candy ever been poisoned by a stranger? So that is what we are talking about today. It's based on a mental floss article that I read. Um, urban legends are among my favorite things. Um, and I really enjoy finding out more about the origins of them and why people, you know, get really into believing um, them or, you know, what the moral lesson is behind it. So every year, I'm sure you are aware, uh, trick-or-treating comes around just like this past weekend and people begin to think that they're, you know, they're, they get really sketched out by strangers giving their kid candy and is it going to be poisoned? Is it going to have, um, you know, I don't know, bla uh, razor blades in it or other things that are going to hurt your kids. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So has candy ever been poisoned by a stranger for Halloween? What do you think? The answer is no. Uh, there is a story from the 1970s where there was a case of poisoned candy. And let me tell you about that. That's going to be our focus today on this Murder Mystery Monday. So in 1974, an eight-year-old Houston boy named Timothy O'Brien died after eating a cyanide-laced pixie stick. Um, while he was trick-or-treating that, you know, week, that day. Um, although it looked like it was probably the case of some deranged neighbor, they actually found out through investigation that Timothy O'Brien was actually killed by his own father who had poisoned his candy. The father's name was Ronald Clark O'Brien. They dug into some of the history of Mr. O'Brien and they found out he had just taken out a pretty lofty um, life insurance policy on his child. You know, red flag, life insurance policy, and then all of a sudden somebody dies that's always something that the police are going to look at, but people think they can get away with it, of course. Not sure why. Um, police found that O'Brien had given both Timothy and his daughter poison candy to try to collect on their policies. Um, and Elizabeth, uh, to cover his tracks, he also gave two other children cyanide pixie sticks, but nobody else got hurt, so I guess Technically, a stranger has done it before, but nobody got hurt in that particular case. So luckily, his daughter and the two other children, and they weren't really strangers. They knew him like they were kids that trick-or-treated with his own children. Luckily, his daughter and those other kids did not eat the poisoned powder Ugh. who likes pixie sticks does anybody like pixie sticks i don't anyway luckily they didn't eat it and only his son died which is tragic but at least it wasn't four kids that he killed um he was eventually convicted um and executed for murdering his son so he got a the death penalty but it wasn't the kind of random poisoning that everyone always seems to think is happening out there another famous story that it has similar um, connotations came from a 1970 case where a Detroit, five-year-old in Detroit, 
died from ingesting a massive amount of heroin right after Halloween. Oh, come on, Hooch. <laughs> Tests on the heroin, um, or tests on his candy, showed that um, somebody had been sprinkling the drugs in his candy, but police learned the story behind his tragic death. It was not, as you would think, a stranger. Um, in this case, his uncle's heroin was laying out in the house. Uh, he actually thought it was candy. And as a five-year-old, you know, they do, they do just find things and think, especially around Halloween, he thought it was candy. He, um, his family, uh, he ate it. And then his family, tragically, to cover up the fact that he had died from ingesting heroin that was his uncle's, his family covered it up by sprinkling heroin all over his candy in his candy bucket from Halloween. So again, no poisoning or, you know, street drugs given to a kid by random strangers in your neighborhood. So interestingly, you know, that urban legend, it's been around for a long time that candy is going to, you know, be tampered with in some way and that you really need to watch out for the whole stranger danger thing. However, we do know that stranger danger isn't really the case in most childhood deaths or even abductions. It's most often done by somebody who knows the child, which is just as sad and tragic probably even more so because often child murders are by parents, step parents, or other caregivers, grandparents. So it's really tragic that that is usually the case. So why do we always think that this is an issue? Let's get into that some more. Why then do we have so much worry about our children in being given poisoned or altered candy. Well, I'm going to go ahead and blame the 80s. Let's just face it. That entire decade, we spent telling kids that all strangers were bad, believing that a lot of things were happening to children that ended up being proven to never have been happening. Um, just look up some of the, you know, McMartin preschool case and some of those other things for more information about that. So we do spend, you know, the majority of the year telling our kids, do not take candy from strangers, do not talk to strangers. And then on Halloween, we randomly throw them out into neighborhoods. And I guess some of our anxieties about being a good parent, you know, come into play there. Um, also, we have to remember in the 80s, 1982, there was the huge Tylenol scare where People were being poisoned um, in their Tylenol that they were getting from drugstores. It was coming to them tampered. You know, that again, the 80s are the reason we have all the special locks and, and seal features on all of our medicine. So, you know, anytime a child dies, like for instance, those two children that I talked to you about. People do find out about it on the news and a lot of people may not look into it thoroughly and will think that it is a stranger. So another thing that, you know, people talk about is, are there razor blades or sharp objects in my kids' candy? Well, fortunately, it's really rare, but it has happened. There's been about 80 reports of sharp objects in food since the late 50s. Most of those turn out to be hoaxes. So of those 80 reports, most of them weren't even true. However, there were a couple that were, um, but compared to say the cyanide poisonings of the Tylenol, uh, usually this is found out pretty easily is less harmful and nobody gets hurt. So it's not like people are going out there really trying to hurt 
um, our kids the way that we think they are. So I hope you had a good Halloween. Uh, this wasn't a local story, but to me it's super interesting because we really do have all of these thoughts about Halloween and we take our candy to be inspected before we let our kids have it. But the truth is, it's probably safe and you can have some of it too after a kid goes to bed. I know that's something I like to do if there's Reese's in there or Milky Ways. Mm. So I hope you enjoyed the story. A little different, still included some murder. Um, I will see you next week on Makeup and Murder Monday. Bye.